so what we were talking about here, we've covered this, it replaces the beneficial gut microflora. And we do not realize how many good microbes we lose every day. We just don't, okay? And even the organic guys in birds, you guys have less of a direct pathway to this, but you still have a lot of it on there. And we'll talk about that, okay? 85% of the immune system is from your gut microflora. The minerals replace the nutrients that's not in the feed sources. And these gut microflora activate our immune systems that run all of our body functions. And so this is really, really important. The problems are the disease factor. We can reduce feed costs, consistent egg production, shell strength and smoothness. Trying to move some of those small and medium eggs up to a, a better size. Our yolks, whites, and our flock longevity. What obstacles do our bird face? The nutrition that comes in. And unfortunately, grain, even from 20 years ago or 50 years ago, is far less in mineral content than it used to be. All the food that we eat is far less than it used to be. And so our forages, our food, all of our grain items have deteriorated. Toxins from pathogens in our feed. Now, you guys get organic grain. It doesn't mean that your organic grain didn't have a health issue out in the field. I have organic growers all over the western and midwestern part of the United States. And what I will tell you is few organic growers understand soil biology, soil mineral mineralization, <coughs> and plant nutrition any better than the conventional or the GMO guys do. They know what they can and can't use. But if anybody's gonna tell me that everything that produced organically is superior in every way to everything else, I'll tell you that is not emphatically not the case. I have seen conventionally produced food with way higher mineral and nutrient content in it than organic food. It's all in how it's grown. Any plant that experiences disease or sickness is unhealthy. And so how they get that crop through to harvest doesn't mean because they make it to harvest that it's vomitoxin, mycotoxin, aflatoxin free. It doesn't mean it's pathogenic free. Okay, we did work for a national fodder company. That's guys, these guys take grain, sprout it, feed it to dairy cattle, feed it to all kinds of things. And when we started doing this sprouting work, what we found is as fast as the grain could grow, so could the mold. And some of this was organic grain. The mold could outgrow the grain. And as the mold grew with the sprouting, which only lasted for six or seven days, you'd get grain this high, it would be so high in, from the mold, the aflatoxins and the mycotoxins, and the vomitoxins sometimes, that you could not feed it to humans or animals. And that just was from the pathogen that was on the seed that came in the bag. It had been cleaned, sorted, graded, and the pathogens were all there. All they needed was a nice, warm, moist environment, and they kicked in. And they produced enough toxins that you couldn't use that product. And so they came to us and they said, what can we do to stop the mold from growing? And as we got looking into the different types of barley and wheat and corn, and we sprouted all kinds of seeds, they have more or less loaded with pathogens. And that occurred in the field. They blew in, they came from the soil, the seeds are contaminated, all of them. So what you're feeding is a pathogen, could be also another toxin. 
could be a lack of nutrition. So now, when something comes into that environment, does that pathogen have a chance to grow? Is there a good guy there to kill them and keep that group in check, or can they take off? We control the pathogens with just some culture. What we did is one company had worked on this for what, a year? At least. Failed miserably. And so they gave us the sprouting unit. It was half a semi-trailer. We brought it over, put it down. We fixed it in what, two days? Uh, I think it was our second batch. Second batch. It's gone. Then we kept the trailer for a year and a half and we started playing with how do we get more nutrient into that plant as we're sprouting it between one day and seven days when it goes out. So we were playing with all kinds of combinations of minerals and, and plant nutrition and microorganisms, these beneficial microbes that you guys give to your chickens. We were using all combinations of that and we were growing all these trays and we were testing them and scanning them, putting them on bricks meters, looking at color, looking at pathogenic growth. And we made some huge improvements in that stuff. When we got tired of it, what did we do, Mike? And we knew these microorganisms would kill those pathogens, and they did. And so, again, is if we've got these microbes that we constantly reinforce into the gut, the pathogens that are coming in cannot get a foothold. Because you can't buy anything that's pathogen-free. You can't buy a grain. You can't buy a commodity. It doesn't exist. <laughs> and, and these sprouts, we'd go out and open up the sprouter and go, gosh, we got radish and we got sunflower and we've got, gosh. The sun was Oh, amazing. I mean, these sprouts are so good. It's just like, here's, here's snack, you know, and we just take handfuls of this stuff and eat it right out of the thing. You know, and we had liquid minerals, we had these microorganisms that we use as our probiotics. Works amazing to control these pathogenic groups. And, and we didn't have to even worry about sanitation. Like Mike said, we got talking about it, he goes, oh, I don't think I've washed those in months. And I go, well, we probably don't need to because the microbes don't allow this stuff. So it, it really, I mean, we've learned a lot of this stuff because we put the time, we put the money, we put the research into it, and we just did it. Everybody says, do you have university data on all this stuff? We go, no, we just have real life data. It either works or it doesn't. And so, and again, uh, the nutritional shortcomings weakens the immune system, antibiotics, toxins. They take out our good gut microflora. Constant antibiotics leads to antibiotic resistance uh, in our microbes. And so what we're trying to do is simply top off the good microbes because we're losing them all the time. Okay? And 